Welcome everybody back to Big Talk with Chris and Greg. Christmas special. Part two. Part two. Ho, ho, ho. Pimp. Ho. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. So if you don't know, that's Chris and I'm Greg. That's Greg. I'm Chris. Okay. And this is Big Talk. Big Talk. Chris and Greg. We like to do things alphabetically. We do. Yeah. That's the only thing we do. That's the only <laughs> we'll do in a row. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming back to part two. Let's just continue on. Uh, oh, wait. First, I always forget. I will not forget. Big Talk CG dot podcast is Instagram. Big Talk CG Twitter. Big Talk CG at gmail dot com. Spotify. Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts. Amazon, iHeart, uh, TuneIn, uh, Player FM, now on Stitcher. Stitcher. Um, we're everywhere. Go to Instagram. We have a list of everywhere we're at. At BigTalkCG.podcast. The most visited profile on Instagram. Number one. All right. So we'll, uh, well, we'll start this. You know, we're uh, having a good time. We're drinking. We're eating. We're snacking. Um, the first ep- first part of the episode, we were doing some eggnog and rum and brandy. Uh, this time, I decided to pull out my favorite Christmas beer for Chris uh, from Port Brewing Company called Santa's Little Helper. Now, this baby is a nice stout, dark, rich, creamy, and what is this? You're talking about the beer? <laughs> 9.9 alcohol. By value nine point. What is the at what point is it no long? Well, I guess the process makes it beer, but at what point is it like we really got to ID you, yeah, right? <laughs> okay, this is an imperial stout made with hazelnut and coffee. So, Chris, cheers. Like I said, this is my favorite Christmas beer, it this, only comes out once part once a year. Um, Santa's Little Helper, thank you. Cheers, cheers, Plastic cup. Can't hear it. <laughs> uh, this is my first time tasting this right now, all right, live. On the interwebs. On the, oh, there we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, that's good. It's a, that's excellent. It's um, my favorite, man. This is a, I'm a, when, I, when I'm drinking, I'm kind of a chugger. Um, this would keep me from being a chugger, but I think the alcohol content would, it would matter. Yeah. Uh, like I said, stouts are very thick and rich, flavorful, um, I just, like I said, um, when I saw it at Bebmo this, uh, during the week when I was shopping, I just saw the four pack and I had to get it, man. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care what I was buying. That's coming home with me. And I was glad I could share it with you. If on, you didn't uh, have big... enough, it was the last thing going back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that is take true. Take that back. No, not this. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. I should have got two. Yeah. You should have brought two. I want you to try it out. Maybe you didn't like stouts, dude. How do I know? I have, um. In all the years that you've known us, this is a serious question. Have you ever seen me, even if I don't like some, a drink, not drink it? I don't think that's ever happened. Um, Rumpelstiltskin. What's that? <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> Gold you're, you're, you're just making up words now. <laughs> Skibbity boobity. <laughs> Gold Oh, yeah. That's a good one. You're the greatest. That's the one with the floating um, uh, gold flakes chips. of gold. gold. Yes. Flakes of gold. That's nasty. I think dude. it's just tin foil in there. Get it caught in your tooth on like a filling or something. <laughs> Not that I have any. And you got a gold tooth? <laughs> you got a gold tooth, dude. My Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. We'll do one more. Cheers before there we, we go. There we go. All right, guys. So uh, we talked about Christmas movies. Yes. We talked about Christmas memories, decorating the house. Presents we love, memorable things, presents we didn't get. Um, yeah, man. It Movies was, we love to watch, traditions with the family. Watch. And me and Greg um, don't, you know, the, the, the great thing about listening to us guys is me and him, a lot of, you know, we kind of have the same flavor, but we don't always um, agree on everything and we don't always see the same things the same way. But we're really trying to demonstrate the civilized way to have a discussion about things when you don't see it the same way. And, is that yeah. what we're doing? Yeah. Oh sure. man, I didn't know about that. All right. Do you so. want to go into music? I'm saying, I say first, let's talk about like we did on our Halloween episode, which if you haven't listened to, go back, listen to our Halloween episode, episode seven or eight or so, right in that area. 
We talked about candy. Yeah. I think this is another holiday where candy. Oh, definitely. Sugary treats and sweetness is definitely plays a big part. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you have any, um, you know, we talked about the hard candy. I love the hard candy. It's still stuck in my teeth. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm just going to have to drink some like hot drinks and just melt it out. Right. You, know, you can't brush it out or anything. It just rips through the floss. So you just, you know, it gets that like yeah. hard edge on it. Are there any candies that you, anything in particular, you look forward to every year? Uh, two, and I'll talk about one of my grandmother's desserts that she would make. Um, I love fudge. So any type of fudge, either with bourbon or without bourbon, with walnuts, without walnuts, is always good. Homemade fudge is always good. Somebody takes the time to make it. Um, you know, love it. Um, gingerbread cookies, sugar cookies. Um, family make them or doing something. And, you know, a few times um, my cousins would make like a cookie basket for the family. Instead of buying a gift, they would just bring, you know, give you a nice basket full of cookies of different assortment. That was always good. That was always, you know, shows a lot of love uh, making cookies or, 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 you know, gingerbread. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I haven't decorated gingerbread men or houses in a long time. But that's a, probably a good tradition to bring up, man. Maybe I'll I'll do that this this Christmas and buy a house or buy some gingerbread men and have the kids have my older kids yeah, <laughs> drinking why not? and uh, scratching their scratchers and make some gingerbread men. Uh, but fudge is is if you have to ask me that one, fudge and um, I like marshmallows. So chocolate covered marshmallows, mint flavored marshmallows, that kind of stuff. I look forward to right now. You know, hot chocolate. You know, once in a while. That kind of thing. How about you? Any? Uh... I also was such a fan. I was very lucky. Um, I had a lot of cooks. I had a lot of cooks in the family, mm-hmm. and I ha- love to hang out in the kitchen. Uh, one of these days, I'll, 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 I've probably cooked for you before, but you know, I, I love to do cooking, and I love to uh, be in the kitchen. It is my second favorite room in the house. Wink, wink. Um, I like uh, the home cooked stuff, man. My grandmas used to cook and make the best stuff. Uh, um, Are you sure, man? My grandma used to come cook dude, and make the best stuff. My grandma used to make. <laughs> have you ever had divinity? No. Explain what it is. It's this like white. God. It's, it's, oh, it's like the white nougat. Kind of like that white nougat, but a little bit lighter, dude. Yes, so good. And no, no, I've had it, but like made from like Knott's Berry Farm or Disneyland or okay. a candy store, not homemade. So let me tell you about you're you're talking second rate divinity. Dude. Yeah, my grandma used to make this homemade divinity, dude. It was amazing, and he even bring it a step further. I don't. I don't know if like grandparents have like this secondary underground storage, but they always got everything (laughs) for every occasion. They would have the tins, the cookie tins, but they would put all their homemade cookies and treats. And I don't know if they're buying (laughs) new tins every year, dumping out the butter cookies and filling it with their own bed. They would come with big tins, small tins, just a handful. of Right. And you know, it would have the fudge in it. uh, Mm -hmm. Butterscotch fudge, Mm -hmm. peanut butter fudge. You'd have the divinity all kinds of cookies. One of my favorite cookies I used to make with my mom. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They're called spritz cookies. No. So way you make them is they're kind of like a sugar cookie, but then they have like an, uh, you do like an amaretto uh, flavoring to them, almond flavoring. Okay. And you make them in a, it's a gun and you put the shape on the front. Um, and you go like right onto the cookie sheet. And, um, it'll oh, make okay. like a wreath or like a star shape. Oh, okay. Kind of almost some of the, um, like Danish butter cookie yes. shapes and stuff like that. But you're making them home. I remember I used to do those with my mom every year, and then I took over and I started doing it myself when I was still a kid. You know, that's just how much I hung out. You know, in the kitchen, loved doing all the baking and cooking. Secret to those, dude, you cannot. If you leave them in the oven, even like 30 seconds too long, they'll get burned on the bottom, dude. And Ooh, then it's like, yes, uh, I also remember start over. You gotta say, oh, well, I'll eat them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of the things that I really loved doing was making the sugar cookies and decorating them with the sprinkles. You get the sugar sprinkles. Remember the little cinnamon dots, the little candy cinnamon things? Oh, yeah. Those were, and you'd put them on the, you'd decorate them and stuff. Like that. My mom was always into like her baking, so she'd have the freaking like frosting in like the little bags with the little tip on it. She'd be icing the cookies and putting sprinkles. 
all the women, my mom, then two grandmas were always doing all this baking. And, um, there were these, also these treats and I don't remember who made these, but they were like a, I can't remember if they were like a butterscotch or a peanut butter, like, um, like coating on like corn flakes. And then they would be like just put in a clump and then you just, I don't know if you baked them or if they would sit out and kind of like dry and then, oh man, those were amazing, dude. Nice. I got to figure out who made those. I got to get that recipe. All right. Do some cookie baking. Um, they, those are the things I remember the most were always looking forward to was the home baked stuff more so, more so than the candy, you know, that you would go to, to buy at the store, you know, always look forward to all those other things. Uh, but I still look forward to all those candies and everything too. Nice. You know, the best thing my grandma ever did was this walnut finger jello and cream cheese kind of dessert. And I fell in love with it every time I wanted to help her out. She wouldn't let me do a lot, but she would help. Um, I would help her crush the walnuts. She would give like this, I guess like the rolling pin and not just the regular one, but like the one that was like metal or steel or just the heavy duty one. And I would just be crushing walnuts, crushing walnuts, crushing walnuts. Um, if not from the bag, or we would do a, um, real walnuts, and then you know from the shell, and then you would start cracking those and taking them out, and then crush them. Anyways, I forgot what she did either. I think she did in the beginning the whole walnuts, and then later on in life she kind of just said, nah, "I'm just gonna buy the bag." But she would make this dessert, and I loved it. Um, so when my um, grandmother passed away and my grandfather passed away we were cleaning out their house my mom goes you know take whatever you want and those are the first things i went after it was her cookbooks because i wanted that dessert now i think i have the recipe somewhere in my cookbook um that she has i think she had like i think i took like four to five cookbooks i think it's in there but recently my mom's cousin and her family oh because that was my grandmother's sister's children they have and made this walnut dessert. And when I found out, I was one, I was pissed. But two, did they have the recipe? Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was just my grandmother's, you know. But like I said, she shared with her sister. And oh, her that's sister. what you got to pass them down. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. but I want, I wanted to be the only you one. You wanted to be the one. Yeah. Um, so my, my, I want them to like me. <laughs> <laughs> but I found out that they've made it and they, you know, they have it and they have the recipe. But I think I still have the original recipe in the cookbooks that we have. Is it handwritten? Had. Yeah. One of those ones oh, yeah, no, that. handwritten, dude. My grandmother Index did. Index card or? Uh, or she, she would, no, no, no. I, I think she she had like a direction, like the cookbook, but she would write notes on the side. So, you know, she would, whatever says, do this, that. Then maybe if she either wanted to add or take away some things, she would do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I still have those. Uh, grandmother's cookbook, man. I think I'm the only one that has it. I spent a lot of time with her, so it was Yeah, it was it's, cool. it's a good memory to have. It's like, you know, as more of it as it sounds, me and my brother, I got, you know, when your parents pass away, I got dibs on that. I got dibs on, I'm like, I got dibs on the recipe box. Because it's got like cutouts <laughs> oh, from the like, recipe box. The re my mom's got a recipe box. It's got like cutouts from like magazines of recipes she's kept and written, handwritten ones. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. I'm like, I got dibs. That's mine. Whatever else you want, I don't care. Mm. So we want to go into the wine cellar. Yeah. Oh, Oops, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Boiler. <laughs> These need to be drank right now. <laughs> um. So yeah, I really like the the home cooked stuff, the home baked stuff. But you know, there are some you know candies that I really look forward to. Like we were partaking in some peppermint bark. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them you don't. That this goes along the same lines. Excuse me for one second. It goes along the same lines as the Halloween episode. I M and M's taste the same during Christmas, whether or not they're oh. a red and green one or during exactly. the rest of the year. I don't care. Yeah, about your M and M filled plastic candy cane, or or something like even the Hershey's Kisses. So they'll add a little peppermint on them or wrap them in. Well, a... I don't mind the peppermint, but don't just give me regular chocolate kisses. I can get those all year round. Give right? me the seasonal flavors. People bitch about it, but I also hear people bitching about pumpkin spice when it's gone. <laughs> give me my pumpkin spice. Give me. Oh, oh, speaking of side note, we have a Starbucks right over by uh, where I spend eight hours of my day, five times a week. And <laughs> I was talking to someone over there, and they said they are not doing eggnog this year. 
I said, hey, are you guys going to do eggnog? I don't see the eggnog drinks. Oh, yeah, we're not doing them this year. I walked out. I walked out. They, then I came back in and ordered what I wanted to drink. I just left for a second. <laughs> I was proving my point. But, dude, they weren't. I hope they cracked up at you. Dude, Look at this they, dummy. <laughs> And it, um, I don't I was, think I, I don't think I've tried a Starbucks eggnog drink. Before. They're great when you when you order it. I got the secret. I'm sure people know, but my dad told me when you order something with eggnog, you can get I want an eggnog latte uncut. That means because they'll do give you like half eggnog, half like regular milk, and cut it. You can do it all eggnog. It's called uncut. Oh, he's like dude, you can get the all eggnog, dude. It's freaking like thick, like the, what we were drinking earlier. Yeah. Delicious, dude. I just gained a pound talking about it. Because <laughs> you got to get the venti. You gotta, we got to go walk the dog again. Dude, I love, yeah, I love seasonal flavors all year round. Okay. I mean, all right. Okay, so what do you got? You got your pumpkin spice during the autumn. You got your peppermint yeah, for winter. For winter. Um, eggnog. Hazelnut is kind of more of a year-round thing. I don't know why they decided on hazelnut. I don't think it's all that great. Um, and then... You know, you got your fruity stuff during the spring and summer, you know, kind of how the beers, you know, it goes. Oh, that's true. Yes. Thing. Um, so I'm a big fan, like we had said in our Halloween episode, and I'm going to say it again. Give me those seasonal flavors. Give me the stuff that I'm not getting all year round. Right. You're not going to the store buying dots and runs, Swedish fish and Neckos. You're getting them during Halloween. OK, don't give me uh, M&Ms and Hershey's Kisses. And, and Kit Kats during Christmas because the yeah. wrapper and it, it's a different wrapper Santa on, it. on yeah. it. Yeah, that's definitely true. So, uh, what's your review on candy canes? I think candy canes are the best. They're they're the best holiday candy. Do you guys put them on your tree? Of course, put them on the tree. I buy two boxes, yeah. so it's about twenty four of them. I let the kids put them on, and I always thought it was cool. I I, I let let them eat them. Um, I love. It's kind of funny the things that you remember growing up. And you just kind of reminisce about them, dude. And you'd, you'd like, oh, man, that was great. Like, I remember eating candy canes. I always ate, eat them the same way. The hook is like a handle. That's where you hold it. Oh, okay. Am I yes. right? Yes. This is, yes. Okay, guys, this is the proper way, according to Chris, to eat a candy cane. And it's probably the way that everybody eats it. But I'm going to act like I invented it. You grab, <laughs> you hold it, <laughs> you hold it down by the hook. And so the long end is sticking up and you Correct. unwrap it from them. All right. And you start, you know. Enjoying just it. Just put it in your mouth and you're just enjoying it. It's just dissolving in your mouth. And you don't unwrap it all the way. You unwrap it maybe about, what's that, about three yeah, inches or so? Yeah. And that's as far as it goes. You don't do any more for right now. And you just keep doing it. And you know how it gets to that, like, knife-sharp yeah. point? <laughs> yes. And it, and it But where the wrapper is, it's like a straight line. <laughs> so it's like... St- it's like a straight arrowhead point, but then it's like the straight line where the wrapper, because no saliva is going past it. Oh, man, that's the way to eat it. And then you're always like, oh, man, look, at it. it's like how you're halfway through the cylinder of the candy cane, and then you unroll it like another inch, and you start going again. Like, and then pretty soon you have this really long graduated point, and you're like... At what point do you bite it? I can usually get... I usually would get, if you're looking at a candy cane, like uh-huh. a letter J, where that upswing on the J... Right at that level where it would cut right into the long okay. side. Right, right, that's it. Where it's like, okay, it's done. All right, because then it's like a U shape. You're yeah. like, what am I going to do with this now? You just pop it in your mouth and just chew it. I love candy canes, dude. Love them. Okay, so now that uh, and don't give me these mini ones. Don't give oh, me the mini candy canes. Oh, really? And don't give me no fruity ones. Ooh, don't fuck with my candy canes. Straight peppermint, peppermint. all the way. Nothing else. Wow. What if they do green? Pe- no, so, I don't so, even want to hear it. Green peppermint. That's not peppermint. It's called wintergreen. Oh. Which is kind of weird because it's wintergreen. You know, I may, you know, it's still mint. So I may not be so aggressive against the wintergreen, but none of these fruities or chocolaties or sour patch or rancher. No. no, no, Okay. All right. All right. Straight red and white. Straight. I love, yeah, straight red and white. Um, Candy canes, they're the best. And you know, going so candy canes are number one. Candy, hey, <laughs> hey man, candy canes are number one. Peppermint <laughs> <laughs> box is number two. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I see it as a kid, like the advertising they do here, like it's a Reese's peanut butter cup in the shape of a snowman. <laughs> 
I, I, I've never, it's like mm. kids don't go crazy over these candies until it's Christmas time. Like, oh my God, I need this Santa Claus bar of chocolate. Well, <laughs> you've never wanted like a Hershey's chocolate. Now you want this crappy, right? waxy chocolate, dude. It's, yeah, I don't know. So I was going through this list, man, and it just made me laugh. It's this website called Eat This, Not That, mm-hmm. like a trying to be quasi healthy. And first, let me proceed everything I say by saying, I don't think the holidays is necessarily the time where you really need, I guess it can get out of hand if you're trying to be healthy, but I don't think you really have to, like, you're going to drive yourself insane trying to not eat bad. Right. So I, (laughs) number three on their list was this organic fair trade nutcracker toffee made of dark chocolate with 70% cacao. And I'm like, that does not sound like holiday anything. No. Um, they just threw the word nutcracker in there. No. They redeemed themselves shortly after by number two is a rough Russell Stover marshmallow Santa. Oh, so you're like, okay, right. there we go. Right. I love it. And uh, man, they, they also talk about like the worst ones, but it's all by nutritional stuff. So I don't really care about that. Like they got some uh, fruity stuff in there that is pretty good. But man. I love the, you know, the seasonal flavors, um, you know, like even M&M's has their seasonal flavors there, right? Their holiday mint. They got a peppermint. Oh, you know what? One of my favorite, my favorite holiday candies that Santa always has had put in my stocking and he always puts in the kids stocking <clears throat> is that chocolate orange. Do you know the chocolate orange? You're looking at me. Like no, you know I, I'm, I'm I'm, about. I, I want to say I, tasted it uh, a few times so what it is it's a solid chocolate orange and you take it out of the box it's in, wrapped in like foil and yeah. you slam it on the on the table oh, and it falls apart oh, into orange okay. slices okay and so it's like an orange flavored cho- oh, man. All, right. all right yes it's i fun, have dude. It's, it's a participation candy i dude. have tried that you gotta before. earn it okay whoa you gotta earn it you gotta earn your yeah. chocolate by slamming it but yeah dude peppermint's king what about you? Are there uh, any uh, candies that you want to talk about? Or are you still d- trying to unstick the pages from your notebook? No. You know what? Um, uh, Christmas toffee is one of those oh, yeah. good ones. Toffee's a really good one. Toffee's that I like good. It. You don't get that year round. No. A lot of people start busting out a lot of their, and it may not be necessarily seasonal to everybody, but maybe in your family. Yeah. It was like. We weren't cooking cookies, like sugar cookies, all year round. We were during the holidays, but other families might do them. That's their cookie they make all the time. Do you know what I like is when Oreo comes out with a white chocolate-covered Oreo during Christmas time. I do enjoy that. I do love I don't think I've had it. Uh, I, it's, you know, you've had a, I'm sure you have an Oreo. It's just chocolate-covered, and it's good. I, I've, I've liked that one. Is that yeah. the white fudge? I want to say yes. Oh, yeah, I did have one of those. Uh I've yeah, had, I've had one of the white fudge. Those are those are good. Those are good. Hey, here, check this out. You're going to be upset about this. Um, on that same website, they're they're talking about like hard candies, stuff okay. like that. Uh, their number five worst for you is these these hard can ribbon oh, candies. Really? That, that they, we've been eating. Break your teeth? They're like <laughs> trying to kill me because they say it's just pure sugar. Oh, whoa. <laughs> it's hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, me fly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think candy is? I almost got, I'm just going to close this window. I'm going to throw my. Did you also know candy cane, cotton corn, uh, candy corn, candy cane, candy corn. I want to say no. I don't think I've ever tried it. Sounds great, though. Well, you know how we love the candy corn. Yeah. We can't stop talking about it. Another thing that I love that is that it used to just be a Easter thing, but now it's. Every holiday, peeps. Love the peeps. Now, let me ask you this. Are you a fresh peep man or are you a stale peep man? You better stale. answer. Stale. Yes. I, I'm i stale, dude. You're I mean, lucky because I was within slapping distance. I would put, reach across uh, this Put table. it to you this way. My wife knows that if I, I get you know peeps, I'll cut it. And forget about it for a week or so. You gotta and then, wait a week. And then you least. and then you kinda like, oh shit, that's right, I got peeps. And they're a little hard. Yeah, I do that. I love I, you I, gotta uh, stale them. I kinda I don't like it when they do crazy flavors. I am and I kinda just stick to the give me the marshmallow, give me the sugar, that type of stuff. I am uh not when it comes to peeps, I'm a traditionalist. 
straight sugar coated marshmallow. Paint whatever you want on it with your, you know, yeah, that's fine. FDA approved or unapproved coloring, and <laughs> I will just eat them up. I don't care what they look like. All right. Whenever you have something like this, side note, you ever have like candy and it's an animal or a figure? Is it just me or do you always bite the head off first? Oh, bite the head off first. Yeah, yeah that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> now here's one on here that I want to talk about that I've never eaten in my entire life. Have you ever had sugar plums? No. I've never had sugar plums. No. Uh, have you had chestnuts? I have. I think five years ago was the first time that I remember. Maybe as a they're kid. Like chew, they're soft, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, they've been selling them at work like crazy, but I've noticed like the chestnuts, I've had one before, and I was like, wow, that's, that's just different. Yeah, I've it's, never, ever had a sugar plum. I don't know. I don't, uh, it's, it's a candied fruit. Apparently, you know, it's probably just like kind of dried, covered in sugar. That's what it looks like to me. And man, I, uh, I've never had them. And then you got some other ones in here. You know, you get your Pez dispensers and stuff like that with your holiday designs. I used to, cl I used to collect Pez dispensers. So no, I, got, I, I got hundreds and hundreds of them. I, li the I like, I like Pez dispensers. I like Pez itself, but also we talk about, can you get it year round? Yes. You know? Don't get it year round, Chris. Um, speaking of candy corn, they got something called reindeer corn. Um, it what? tastes so you got the so you got the candy cane, candy corn, which tastes like candy canes. All right. Then you got the candy corn that's just red, green, and white, but it tastes like regular ass candy corn. <laughs> so that's great, dude. So you can get both worlds. You can get your seasonal flavor and your regular ass candy corn. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> uh, I love you know anything that's seasonal, any flavor that's seasonal. Yeah, as you talk like about we see, and and the the hard candies. You know, I'm glad you brought them over, dude. I'm gonna grab another piece right here. I like the ribbon Ooh, ones, yeah, the straight that, that hard. Was, yes. I, I like the filled ones. Um, yeah, that's because you always, to you always forget which one what they taste like. like yeah. The last one I had, I thought it was gonna be mint, and it was strawberry or something. So I'm just gonna grab one of these. You know what I like, but it's not um not only for the holidays is saltwater taffy. Oh, so mm -hmm. sometimes around uh, certain candy making stores, Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, I, I think there was a few of them in uh, Long Beach or the, the piers, you know, stuff like that. They have a candy making store and they make the saltwater taffy. And just watching that machine go round and round and round and round, it's just like it's got it like overlaps. Yeah, like, and you're like, how is this working? <laughs> what the hell is going? It's like, Whoa. Let, let me stick my fingers in there. And then you walk in, and then you see all the the taffy flavors, and you're just, you know, I want one of each one. You know, I think Neapolitan was my my favorite, other than the peppermint or something the like pepper, that. The white one with the little red stripes on it. Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes they'd go crazy, and then look like they had a. Um, like a candy cane in the middle or a, a house or a design or, you know, something for the holidays. What about, um, uh, blossom cookies, peanut butter, blossom cookies. Those are the ones yay round, like a silver dollar with the Hershey kiss right in the middle. Those cookies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love them. That's, love that's them. Kind of a holiday thing. You don't, you don't see those year round. Well, I don't think we go to cookie stores. I think if we went to Cantor's oh, bakery, no, no, they'd no, probably no, see no, them no, all no, the time. We're talking yeah. home baked. Yeah. No, no. I'm talking home baked. Yeah. We got to go to Cantor's. <laughs> they got those there? They have a bunch of good cookies, tell you that much. We always spend 20 bucks when we go. I know. I know. You're like, I need a couple of those, a couple of those. Next thing you know, you got. Can you help me to my car with, with my cookies? <laughs> yeah, no. Put them in the trunk. My wife loves that, man. She just loves it. I want, I want this, I want this, this, this. And I usually let her because it's like, why fight her? Because I know I'm going to enjoy it too. Oh, yeah. You're going to probably eat more than half of them. <laughs> I don't Honey, don't get too much. Only spent ten dollars. What? Twenty five dollars later? <laughs> yeah. Fine. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be ten. <laughs> yeah. It started off as ten. Um Yeah, dude. Just give me the peppermint stuff, man. I don't know, I'm good. I like the hard candy. How are you with like cocoa? Cocoa in our house. Um kids have been well Cocoa, because where I grew up. In Washington, you get that three to four months of summertime where it's really warm. Okay. Like, like 80 degrees every day. The rest of the year, you know, it's kind of, that, that's about that amount of time. The rest of the year, it's, you know, cooler or rainy. So hot chocolate was almost a year-round thing. Okay. 
Um, but man, dude, it's been hot this winter so far, dude. Like Thanksgiving was hot and yeah. I was grilling. It's crazy, but hot chocolate, I'm good with it. It, um, the, kid, the kids drink it. I put, I'm not a real big whipped cream person, but we have some whipped cream left over. That's what I was going to ask you. Are you whipped cream or marshmallows? Marshmallows all the way. Yeah. I like them both. I like them you both, the, man. I, you like them both? I like, no, I like marshmallow way better. Okay. Well, do you like them equally or one better? I like them equally. Yeah, I can't, I can't tell you if I like which one. Let us know what you guys like better, marshmallow or whipped cream <laughs> on your cocoa. Ooh, there you cocoa. go. Cocoa. Oh, Only. Like, you right here, dude. They got. Their- Maybe we should put that on the Twitter machine, JJ. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're talking here like the worst candy canes, dude. They got the trolley uh, sour bright canes, uh, yeah. atomic warheads, Hershey's chocolate mint canes. Yeah, no. Jelly Belly. Maybe. Welches. Did you just say maybe to je- no? Jelly beans. Come on. Okay. Here's one for you. And I would eat these just to eat these because I'm a freak. Their number one worst Christmas candy cane is pickle flavor. Ew. Pickle candy cane. No, that's gross. With, with peppermint? No, it's just pickle. They're pickle flavor. Pass. I try them. Pass. You like pickles? Yeah, but I don't like it in candy form. Why not? Because it's supposed to be sour and get you all vinegary and mess you up. Maybe it tastes vinegary and messes you up. Nah. I better have some whiskey with it. We do whiskey shots with it. Oh, that's not good. Or, they got, then they got the rest of them. It's gross. You know, a cherry one. No, these are their top ones, and the rest mm-hmm. of it's just peppermint. The minis is number one. I'm not a big fan of the minis. I already said that. Yeah, what's up with that, man? Um, I don't know. Wait, what's up with me not liking them, or what's up with mini candy canes? What's up with you not liking them? I want a whole, well, I want a whole candy cane. Is that it? I'm just going to... Yeah, I just... Is that it? That's it. You want the whole one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. Let's move on. All right, man. So uh, let's start caroling. You ready? Ready for some... Alright. You know that what? That's great, dude. <laughs> there's a lot of Christmas songs, a lot of Christmas music, mm. and I'm one of them. And I recently found out my daughter's just like me. Where she doesn't want to hear Christmas music, she doesn't want to hear uh, pull out the decorations till after Thanksgiving finishes. So, come Thanksgiving dinner, finished, done. You want to pull out your Christmas music? That's fine. After Thanksgiving, over. Sounds good. I love it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, uh, I I I'm not a, totally against what you just said. Thursday's over. If you want to go out at 12.01 a.m. and start putting your Christmas decorations, that's good. At least wait till Thanksgiving. Um, if I had a say in it, which I do, um, I would wait until at least that following Monday. Okay. I think you need to give yourself a little holiday buffer zone to maybe decompress from the Thanksgiving pandemonium. Give yourself a chance to fit back into your pants. <laughs> Unless you got stretchy pants. Unless you got stretchy pants. Yeah, stretchy <laughs> pants. Uh, <laughs> I wore sweats all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> or no pants, whatever, oh, dude. Yeah. Um, and then you can yeah, start decorating, you know? But nothing, and I'm going to say this as clear as possible as I can to the nation, do not start decorating for Christmas before Thanksgiving. It is a mortal sin. It's the 11th commandment. Would you agree or disagree? I agree. Okay, thank you. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk music. All right. Let's talk music. All right. Um, everybody's waiting for us to talk about it. We'll. S- I'll just say everything we need to say, and we'll let it go. Um, we're not going to talk about Mariah Carey, because why'd you bring her up then? I'm just saying we're not going to talk about it. What's your favorite Christmas song? Mariah Carey. <laughs> I was reading, dude. It said she. Deserves. She has deserved her title as Queen of Christmas. Uh, and I said, I've never even heard someone say that. I didn't even know there was like an election. Is that like, <laughs> I didn't vote. Is that like countries going to war to find out who the queen's going to be or, or what's going on? Um, I, I, it's, yes, is it the biggest selling um, modern Christmas song of all time? Yes. But she's, it's, it, 
You got to give me more. You yeah. got to give me more. You can't just give me one song. Um, You want to know what song is way better than that? Which one? Last Christmas by Wham. Whoa, that's a good Last name. Last Christmas I gave you my heart. I forget the next line. Very next ne- day you gave, gave it, it away. away. Okay, I got one better for you than no, that No, you one. don't. I got one. Ready? Well, hold on. Let's talk about Hold on. Hold on. Let's talk about this for a second. Hold on. Okay. We got... We got 30 to 40 more minutes that we can <laughs> talk about. Let's go. Um, so that song came out in 1984 okay. by Wham, um, Andrew Ridgely, and George Michael. It did not top the charts until 2017. And I said to, when I read that, because I did not know, um, you guys got to learn something every day, dude. Correct. Shooting star across, the more you know. Um, I said, Greg, when I read that 217, I go, what year did George Michael die? And he goes, I don't know. I go, I bet it was 2017. And I looked, and I was five days off. He, Unfortunately, I love George Michael. You guys, if you listen to the other episode, I got George Michael's Faith tape for Christmas. Um, I have not always been a fan of their music, Wham! and George Michael, but he does have a great voice. There, He has some really good songs. Um, he died on Christmas Day 2016. So I'm sure, you know, at the end of that Christmas season or probably the next one in 2017, because that would have led into 2017, that song was just... Right. Deservingly so, dude. I mean, it's, yeah, a, it's, Devin, it's, a, Devin it's so. a great song. It, it touches it's on everything. It's a sad song, though, man. <sighs> Last Christmas. Gave you my heart. Yeah. Next day, you know, some, threw it away, some Chris. People, some people that have black hearts will wait for Christmas to get that loot and that Christmas booty, and then they're like, Later. You know, just hang on to this relationship a little bit longer. Let me see what I get out of it. Uh, my the da- next day, they uh, take it away. My dad's joke was, hey, uh, if you have a girlfriend, make sure you dump her before Christmas so you don't have to buy her a gift. <laughs> and then what, make up uh, in January <laughs> yeah. and then break and then, up again? <laughs> before before, Valentine's, before your Valentine's Day? Then it, you get man. the whole rest of the year? That's, <laughs> oh, I, I know he was kidding. My dad was a player. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt, are you ready for the move on? Yeah, I'm All really right. interested to hear what you're going to talk about because you're always pulling out um, some stuff if I've never heard of or something obscure. Go yeah, ahead, yeah, dude. And you're well, no, talk- no. Okay. Uh, how we, we were talking about um, good songs mm-hmm. and, and better songs. And stuff like that. I was going to say, um, do they know it's Christmas from 1984 Band Aid when the, oh, yeah, um, was it the, the, the UK artist decided to, to get together? Band Aid, yeah. It was kind of like a answer to Live Aid kind of. Uh, was it Live Aid or was it the the Michael Jackson version where they did, you know? That was Live Aid. We Are the World? That was Live Aid? Yeah, that was Live Aid. Right. Uh, yes. Yes. Wasn't yes. it? Yeah. All right. Band Aid, yes. We Are the World. We Are the World. We are... Uh, do They Know It's Christmas? 1984. Uh, fun song. Duran Duran. I'm going to take a George Michael and all the other. They, you know, if you were... Any sort of star in music during the 80s, what year, 84? 84. You were singing in this song. Bruce Springsteen, Michael Jackson, Billy Joel, Stevie Wonder, Bono from you. They weren't even big. Wasn't No, no, he was in, wait. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was talking about We Are The World. Okay. Let's flip. I'm sorry. Right. Let's talk about the um, Band-Aid one. Sorry. That had uh, George Michael, Bono, um, who else was in that one? Paul Young, um, he was a British guy. Yeah. Um, it was mostly European, mostly UK Correct. people. That song kicks. Yeah, it's that good. That song kicks, dude. That's a good song, good. and it's it was all for charity. It was all to help. That's when um, they had a really bad droughts and whatever was going on with the governments there in, in, yeah. in Africa and, and defeating the the people there that were starving to death. Now remember, in '84, I wasn't. Um, Keen on other music if it wasn't Iron Maiden and Jewish Priest and Scorpions and Van Halen and ACDC. But as I became older, that song, you know, hit my ears and it's cool. I like it. I could sing it. Or, you know, I could sing it in my car at least. I really like that song. That's one of my one of my favorite Christmas songs. Um, you just beat me to the punch. <laughs> um, you know, they... It's always good when you see, 
you know, people coming together for charity in the holiday time. There's no better time because it really kind of sh- separates the, f- the, how do I word this? The people that have had fortune lean in their way, then people that have had fortune and fortunate stuff lean the other way against them. So it's good to see people that we, we should all be giving back, but it's good to see that, you know, when they get together and you know, I'm sure it raised millions of dollars to, for a good cause. Yeah. Love it. Um, Let's go, let's move to a more comical note. All right. And we're going to talk about Carol of the Bells by Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Wow, yeah. Uh, You're like, Chris, that's not a funny song. No, but I will tell you what it is funny about it in a minute. First, let's talk about the song. So this is the song that goes. Yeah. It's an instrumental. It's like just, I'm sure you guys have all heard it. It's rock guitar, heavy drums, uh, synthesizer action going on. Great song. It's heavy. It's hard. Yes. It's rocks. Yes. It's rock. Totally rocks. It is number one. What? Do you remember? Let's talk about it right here. Season eight, episode 10 of The Office. Dwight, Shroot, Creed. Um, uh, the guy that was Dwight's because remember he owned the building the guy that was his assistant mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> who was the skinny guy that was like the office manager yes and they were all doing the air guitar air drum performance to that song they're like <laughs> and creates all air guitar and Dwight's jump on you remember that dude and they're showing that's, all the gift giving awesome. throughout the office man that's it's awesome when dude. I hear that song I think about that scene and uh, I had to rewatch it today I just looked up that scene I was like that's fucking bitchin', dude. That's, That's amazing, bitchin', dude. dude. That's bitchin'. I love it. I love it. That yeah. that my one of my favorite shows, with one of my favorite uh, holiday songs, and uh, love it. Can't get enough of either of them. Yeah. Do you uh when you when the holidays come around? I did this for Thanksgiving when I was cooking. There's a show I don't watch a lot. It's called Everyone Loves Raymond. I'm sure you've seen it. Everyone. Loves I've Raymond. seen it. Don't watch it all the time. So, on, I've seen it a few on, times on Peacock. They. Obviously, have a lot of NBC sitcoms because it's NBC's uh, streaming service. They had all the Thanksgiving episodes, oh, all okay. the yes. shows. Yes. So I watched them all. So The Office, all the Christmas mm-hmm. episodes. So I was going through all of those. Do you do any of that kind of stuff? Oh, definitely. I I kind of go through my favorite ones because they have them all. Like they're like season one episode, this season yeah. two, not, and they don't have one every season. But they, you know, for a lot of their sitcoms, they do that. Or a lot of their TV shows, you know, even Saturday Night Live and. Stuff like that. Do you? I know it's. Dude, I don't know what they're doing over there. Or who is designing it? Have that shit at the top. Don't make me go down button, down button, okay. down button like twenty times. Like, is it even on here? And yeah, I, okay. I was doing that when I was doing my research. I was kind of going, "Where's the holiday button like that I can just?" It's like twenty clicks down, and yeah, make it easier, especially right now during the holidays. I've gone down to it like two or three times. Now, shouldn't you have figured out that I like smart enough that you need to bump it up a little bit? So, one TV show which I do like. Uh, and I do watch repeatedly Christmas time, Christmas morning, uh, that 70s show. Um, I think they did eight or nine seasons. And every time they had a Christmas episode, they have like a one. I would always want to re- repeat them through the whole uh, morning when I'm waking up during Christmas time. I just love it. It just reminds me of 70s classic kid where you know I was a kid, not a teenager. So I remember some things. So the 70s show, when they do their Christmas episodes, always brings me back fond memories of that kind of stuff was that on fox yeah that was on fox so it's not on a, any streaming right now but you know I, I i own the dvds so that kind of stuff the what the d yeah d- i own the eight uh the video the beta and the video cassette <laughs> the beta rack. i got the soundtrack it's on eight track <laughs> <laughs> hey what one um artist we're gonna bring up to singing are um actually two artists but they're known from the beatles which is john lennon um Happy Christmas, War is Over. Beautiful, great song. And the other one was uh, Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney. Those two songs, man, they're good stuff. I mean, originals, just hash out, sound good, fun, Christmas time, singing, rocking. It puts me in a good mood. You know, yes, I'm only listening to it during December, maybe a tiny bit in the new year, but, you know, good stuff. I like it. 
Yeah, do any it's like do anything those guys do, dude, is good. It seems like most of it is not all of it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, Paul McCartney was my favorite Beatle, but um, John Lennon's good too. John Lennon's good too. They had some good stuff. I would have to go back and listen to those songs. I don't remember them, unfortunately. And, you know, I don't remember a lot of stuff. I'm old. Um, I mean, you're young. I will, like I've proven, I will go and back and listen to it all. Well, oh, that was John. Was Yoko Ono also sang on that song? Yeah, huh? definitely. Mm, yeah, maybe not. But, Why not, man? You can just listen to it. There's other, you know, there's other, other artists did different versions of it. You can hear one of those versions. Hey, there's check it out. a ton of them. Sting, Phil Collins were also on that. Um, on the UK one, the, the Band Aid, right? Band Aid one. Um, so, just to, to let you know, and also, it was the fastest selling UK single in history, and held that record until "Candle in the Wind" by Elton John in 1997. Dude, "Candle in the Wind" is a badass song, dude. Elton John is great, right. and uh, to hold it for that long, that's especially. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. It's great. It's great. How are you on um like st- old, you know, standards and classic? To me, really when it comes down to it, the holidays and Christmas, I love the standards. I love I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. That was me not being Crosby singing <laughs> just to I don't want copyright <laughs> coming out at me. That was me singing White Christmas. Um, Are you sure it was a Bing man? Yeah, man. Yeah. What, do you, what do you, what do you, I mean, written by Irving Berlin, one of the, it's like the greatest selling single of all time. Great. I mean, get, you heard me right. Greatest Correct. selling single, not Christmas, single of all time. White Christmas. Love the movie. Cheesy plot. Love the movie. White Christmas, it came from Holiday Inn. It was per- first performed in Holiday Inn, and then White Christmas was after Holiday Inn, but Bing Crosby was in both. Um, what do you, how do you feel about the standards? Those songs that are of that era, of that style, the standards, those really sound like Christmas to me. You know what? Uh, a lot of the times when we um, at the house and we're having dinner, Christmas dinner, um, my mom will put, put on the Christmas channel, and we'll hear it, and you know the Christmas song comes up from Nat King Cole or Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas from Judy Garland. Um, it's a wonderful time. Andy Williams, you know those kind of stuff comes up. It's cool to listen to. I mean, they're not my favorite. You won't hear me rocking out to them in um, in my car or anything. But you know, if they're playing, they're in a store, department store, you know, market, wherever I'm at, it's playing. It's good stuff. No harm in that. I can listen to them. Johnny Mathis, you know, all the good stuff. Andy Williams, Johnny Mathis, Nat King Cole. Yeah. Neil uh, Sedaka. Throw the uh, Armstrong in there. Yeah. And uh, Louis Armstrong. I almost said Neil Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, dude, I just love the standards, man. I just, I, I mean, Frank Sinatra, dude, singing anything is gold. Right. Um, I got one on here that I've never heard. So just so you guys know where I'm looking and getting these lists, I kind of Google and I'll look at some that are like more well known. Cause let's get something straight, guys. If we were just gonna, if we just were gonna talk about Christmas music and we didn't look anything up or do anything, we would probably be done right now. Cause we'd be like, I can't think of any other songs, you know. So you gotta refresh your memory. So I do a little bit of looking at like mainstream sites, and then I do a little uh, looking at sites that aren't that big. So the one is called youdiscovermusic.com. And it's got White Christmas, number one. George Michael's, number two. Okay. Frank Sinatra, Jingle Bells, number two. Okay, this is, okay. The, number four, a song I've never heard. The Pogues and Christine McCall, a song called Fairy Tale of New York. You ever heard that song? Never. Never heard that song. Huh. I'm going to have to, uh, it's like a Celtic folk flavored song. Wow. Huh. Oh, it was once banned. Oh, we're gonna have to listen to it. It was once. It goes right along, dude. It was once banned by the BBC for its raw language, for the lyrics. You're a bum. You're a punk. You're an old slut on junk. Okay. Are you sure the Ramones didn't sing that, dude? Oh, or all right, man. Uh, or Iron Maiden or but, but Judas I'll, Priest. But on this website, I mean, Band Aid is on here, and then John Lennon, Yoko Ono. So, so okay, it's good. 
Um, Dean, like, <laughs> here we go. Dean Martin, let it snow, let it snow. Here's one that I'm going to kind of hand off to you to let you talk about it because you have been singing it nonstop all mm. freaking day. Blue Christmas by Elvis Presley. I have not been singing it all day. <laughs> <laughs> You or know whatever. what? He's been Elvising out. Dude. <laughs> he hasn't. He's been Elvising out, not pelvising out. So Ooh. you, you got to combine the two. Yeah, I'll put it up on Instagram. I'm gonna put a little hip shaking. <laughs> um, you know what? Elvis was one of my dad's favorite artists. Um, and you know he loved Elvis. And is that the one that goes like ooh ooh ooh? Is I'm. That song? I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. Uh, so you know, Blue Christmas. I mean, it just it's a sad song, but. Hey, it's it's you know it it works sometimes during the holidays. It's not all cheer and be merry. You got to be sad. You know some people are sad, and that was one of those sad songs that work. Elvis Presley, man. You know uh, just to say something on that one, um, for that one, what another Christmas song which I do love is uh, Feliz Navidad, Jose Jose Fresciano. Feliz Navidad. Yeah, that's it's. You know Feliz you want Feliz Navidad. Dun, 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 dun. You won't catch me during the. The rest of the 11 months singing it, but you know, come December, you put it on. Hey, I know the words. Hey, I'm, I'm, uh, I can enjoy, you know, singing Merry Christmas in Spanish. Hey, that is, um, that's about the extent of your Spanish, right? No, <laughs> Chris, no, that is all you know in Spanish. Yeah. Feliz Navidad. I just said no. Oh, okay, no, see. Sí. <laughs> I've already out Spanished you. Yeah, I know. Thanks, man. Live on the interwebs. Thanks. Hey, I just want to go back for a second. And Elvis's um is it was as Elvis's Christmas album that had the blue Christmas. Greatest selling Christmas album of all time. Dude, these numbers I don't think what? people are gonna fathom these numbers. Listen to this. Twenty million copies. I thought you said Mariah Carey was the best one. No, best selling single. Oh, modern. See, modern. See, they have to they have to keep expanding. Yeah, right. It's not the best selling Christmas. Classic, modern. It's the best selling hip. modern. This is the best Top. selling Christmas album. Wow, uh, White Christmas being the best selling from, single from Elvis. Like, wow, like yeah. single. Yeah, in any music. So, man, dude, it, Elvis, man, just shows you the power of the pelvis, bro. All you gotta do is <laughs> give it a little gyration, <laughs> selling uh, albums to the nation. Right. Uh, you know, you got, uh, uh, I really like uh, Jackson 5. Santa Claus is coming to town. All right. Yeah, dude. Not my favorite version of that song, but that song is Young Michael, um, the other four guys, <laughs> basically. Tito. I don't want to be Tito. Jermaine. Just, uh, why is everybody making jokes about Tito, dude? Okay, name the other ones Jermaine, Tito, Michael. There's not two Titos and two Jermaines, dude. <laughs> and Michael. <laughs> The other guy and the, the other, other dude, the other, other one, the other, the other Jackson. Are you sure doesn't Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike? Because Bell the love. <laughs> You're stupid. I like that one. It's it's a playful version. You know, it's, it's yeah, dude. It's it's cool. a it's at that time. Um, you know, 1970s came out on their uh, Jackson Five Christmas album. Perfect for the time. Perfect for, for that era. Um, it's a fun song. It's just the way they sing it, the rendition of it. It's little Michael, he was, you know, I guess he would be the prince of pop at that point. He wasn't the king yet. Oh, um, I coined it, copyright, big top, Chris and Greg, <laughs> double stamp it, no erase these. Um, prince of pop, yeah, the prince mm-hmm. of pop. Um, love it, love it. I want to talk about not to cut you off because you look like you were about you took just took a big, big breath like you were going to say something. Yeah, I was. My favorite version of that song is the Bruce what? Springsteen live version. What? Santa Claus is coming to town. Um, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, or just Bruce Springsteen? He's got the E Street Band at that point. All right, you guys say it correctly, man. Okay, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Mm. Santa Claus is coming to town live. Live. Um, it starts off slow, then it gets going, and they're rocking. It's got Clarence Clemens saxophone soloing, and then you know they start doing a little dialogue back and forth him and clarence and you know bruce starts laughing a little bit and it just adds to like the genuineness of dude how good of a time these guys are having yeah, on i've definitely. never been to a concert but anybody that's told me like dude these guys are great they've had such you know clarence clemens rest in peace but man they it just shows 
the how much fun they're having and it just comes right through your speaker right through your headphones if you guys haven't heard the song you you don't hear it a lot you don't right and so when i hear it i'm like oh yes dude i i, I love you, it you, you hear a lot you of enjoy other it songs. Stuff. yeah out of all the songs we've listed this is probably the one you will hear the least during the holidays man it's great like i said the fun comes through you're going to find yourself singing to it and you start hearing him kind of laughing while he's singing because they're just, I can only, you just imagine what they're doing on stage or whatever singing there. And it's great. I love it. man. I love it. Live music. Yeah. That's it. Hey, um, we're having fun and we're talking. So a little controversy here. What's your view on uh, baby? It's cold outside. Classic, classic yep. song. Uh, I think it's good. I, I will say in general, just to, to preempt what you're going to say, and I know where this is kind of going, but I don't think we're going to go there. It's hard to take things that were done in a different era and different time and um, condemn people for things that were acceptable at that time. Um, but the, that song was, um, it's a really good song. I like it. it. It's a good song, dude. It's catchy and, and you can sing it. And if, you, and if you guys don't know what the song is, it's, it's, I'm not saying that we shouldn't condemn people. Let me, let me make myself clear. There are some things that have been done that are atrocities in the history of this world that definitely people should pay the price for no matter how long ago they were done. But I don't think a song is necessarily something that we need to condemn people for. It's a okay. song. It's a song. It's a song. You it's can song. turn your radio off or change the channel. Got Just it. like a TV show. Yes. There we go. That's what I kind of wanted to say. Okay. Um, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. You know what? Your, your view on it was correct. And that's what kind of was it like. So when people were saying, well, I want to say two Christmases ago, maybe three, how people were saying, oh, I don't, we shouldn't play it. It's not right. It, it condones date rape. So I kind of just said, you know, isn't it like I have the beholder? Like you said, it was done years ago. Let's just, you know, let it run or, or, or if you, like you said, if you don't like it, you can always it's, change it. If you don't do want to do it, you can, you can not listen to it. Um, I noticed that when I was searching for it on my playlist, like it wasn't always on the forefront. I really had to dig a little bit and get a couple of cover songs, cover, cover. No one wants to be the one that's called out. That's why. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Anyways, I, I wanted to bring that up because I thought that was a, a, a good thought for Christmas where we're bringing little different things up and, and having fun that way. I just, you know? um, Googled it right now, and um, it's it's on all the services. So no one's, no matter what stance anybody takes, people it's everywhere. Yeah. So it's not like it. And it might have been just, um, it might have just been go uh that way for a moment in the culture of of our nation. Correct. Where it was um, that's the way everybody was thinking at that moment. Yeah. Um, but um. If you go back to a couple of our, our last episodes when we were talking about the PMRC, I've never, not once in my life, at 45 years old, heard that song and thought that it was date rape. Same here. Until someone said, until until, until actually I'm, today when you were like, hey, did you hear, you know about all this stuff? And I was like, what? You know, yeah. you listen to the song, you know, it's a guy and a girl at his house and she's like, Oh, I'm going to go. And he's like, oh, it's cold outside. You should stay here. No, I'm going to go. It's cold outside. You should stay. You know, it's baby. It's cold outside. She relents. She's like, okay, I guess I'll stay. Da, 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 da. I guess maybe I've never listened to the words close. So maybe I could be, I could eat crow later. I don't know. I haven't really um, studied the lyrics. Um, but to me, it's just kind of like she decides to stay. Yeah. And I think there was one where saying that, oh, let me fix you a drink. Let me. Let me put okay. some holiday cheer in your That's liquor. Eggnog. Oh, that's a little steel panther right there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stuff your stocking. <laughs> I don't think he said that on there. Although Steel Panther did. Yeah. You were playing that for me yeah, earlier. Let's get more uh, uh going going on a fun side. So going on a fun side, so you guys don't know Steel Panther. From LA, our, they, one, one of our favorite bands. Favorite, we really favorite bands. Yeah, they um, uh, are categorized under comedy, but they, they're a they're a hair metal band. Um, yeah, that term fits them perfectly. Um, but they sing a lot of their stuff is sexual. 
All yes. of it is sexual. <laughs> and uh, they said, what was the song you were playing earlier? Uh, the Stocking Song. That's what it's called. The Stocking Song. It's called the Stocking Song from Steel Panther. <laughs> and uh, a lot of it was, I'll stuff your stocking. Yeah, uh, uh, you can drink my eggnog. <laughs> Sexual. So, so I listen. So let me. I didn't. This is not the direction I was headed it to. Okay. And I'm not a woman. I'm wondering what one I'm more offended by if I was. Baby, it's cold outside, or I'm going to stuff your stocking. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Maybe we need to get a third participant sometime. Uh, how about we're we gonna, put. How we're going to tackle this topic later. How about we put it on the Twitter machine? Yeah, we put it on. JJ. Twitter me, Twitter me, baby. You know, just throwing that out there. I didn't even think about that. You know, <laughs> here's the dude. And here's the thing that just blows my mind is they're going to say, oh, this dude, it's been done by um, Michael Buble does a version of it. Um, Dean Martin has a version of it. Uh, the John Legend has a version of it. Baby, it's cold outside is the song I'm talking about. I mean, all of these huge worldwide correct. artists have correct. done it. Correct, correct, correct. Um, nobody was saying anything then when they were. Right. Nobody was saying anything then. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to... I am just going to say I like the song, and it's a great holiday song, and love it. Love it. Listen to it every year. Yeah. I'm glad we talked about it, though, so you know these people can be informed. Let us know what you think. Make up your own mind. Yeah, basically, you know, mind. We're, we're telling you. Um, so uh, as we go on, um, there's a few albums I hope you guys uh, take a chance and listen to. Now, a lot of this stuff, we're not going really classics. I'm not really going classics. I'm going more modern uh, rock, heavy metal, hair metal bands. Um, there's an album, a Christmas album called uh, Monster Ballads Christmas. A bunch of different artists on there um, are... On there, just to uh, talk about it for a second. Um, Skid Row is doing Jinger Bells. Winger is doing Happy Christmas, The War is Over. Janie Lane, our favorite singer from Warrant, is doing Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. And you know what? When I heard that, when I was doing my research and I put that on, dude, it made, it touched me for a second because I know Janie Lane is not alive today. But I was like, damn, I miss Janie. That's how I felt yeah. with that one. Um, Twisted Sister um, does I'll Be Home for Christmas. Queensryche does... White Christmas, Run, Rudolph Run, LA Guns, um, Naughty Naughty Christmas, uh, Danger, Danger. Uh, the Nelson Brothers do Jingle Bell Rock. Faster Pussycat does Silent Night. Dawkin, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Uh, Striper does Winter Wonderland. And you know what? And that's my favorite rock and roll song right now of a cover. Uh, Striper doing Winter Wonderland. I thought they ripped it and they do a so they did a cover that just fits them for a Christian band of doing, you know, Winter Wonderland. I love it, man. Mike, That's good is stuff. Michael the least singer? Michael Sweet? Michael Sweet, yeah. His voice is just amazing. He knows how to sing. You know what? Uh, another, um, uh, Weezer does a Christmas album, you know, same thing, some songs. Another artist, which I do love, um, definitely in the rock category, but not metal, is um, Butch Walker. He does that about five or six songs going uh, over the holidays and under the influence. Butch Walker Christmas album, all the classics, Walking in a Winter Wonderland, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bell Rock, Frosty the Snowman, Little Drummer Boy, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and Feliz Navidad. Stuff like that, man. Uh, even Twisted Sister got into the uh, fact of doing stuff. So Chris, uh, Twisted Sister does a heavy Christmas album. Um, and it's fun. It works. You know, a lot, of, a lot of those songs are over and over. Cheap Trick does another one, too. Christmas album. Um, I don't know, man. There's just any any artist, anything you can find. There's like a ton of Christmas stuff. You know, people put it out there. Same songs over and over and over. But, hey, you know what? It depends on what you like and how you feel, that uh, what you want to hear. It's out there, man. It's great. I love it. I love the fact the Twisted Sister did a whole Christmas album, and they're Jewish. Right? Yeah, that's great. I went to, um, so they did like this little mini tour. I think they did three cities. And I don't think we went to this show together. I think I went with our good friend Eric Perkins. 
to the House of Blues and saw Twisted Sister on that tour. No, oh, no way. And uh, of course, they played all their hits. Uh huh. Um, the only time you'll see a mosh pit on a power ballad when they played The Price. Oh. Um, and uh, man, they played all the Christmas songs. And, and dude, it was a long, it was like two hours, two and a half hours, dude. It was awesome. It was amazing. Twisted Sister's great live. But that's great, dude. They're like, eh, we'll do a Christmas song. We're yeah. Jewish. Who cares? Um, the last song I kind of want to talk about is totally uh, not our bread and butter. Christmas and Hollis run DMC. Oh, okay. Look for you hear that you hear this song during the holidays. It's one of the only rap Christmas songs you hear on the radio. I don't know of another one. If you do, uh, uh, let me know on Instagram. Man, this song has been used in less than zero. Die Hard, The Night Before, The Grinch, a movie called Holiday Rush from 2019, TV shows, dude, The Office, Everybody Hates Chris, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Orange Is the New Black. All these, I mean, it's used everywhere. I'm not memorizing that. I'm reading it. Um, Run DMC, I really have always liked them. Um, Christmas and Hollis, dude, that plays like. Um, John McClane flies into LA and die hard <laughs> and he's on the, in the limo. Right. Um, uh, I can't remember the limo driver's name, but, uh, drives him all the way to the Naga, Naga, oh, Naga more, Naga more. Yeah. Naga tower. And, uh, August, is it Augustine? I think that might be his name. No, Argyle. Argyle okay. is the limo driver and, uh, drives him. And he said, you want to listen to some Christmas music? And he puts in Christmas and Hollis, dude. And it's great, dude. Yeah. LA, it's sun's out and no clouds in the sky, just right. like it was today. And, <laughs> and that's a good, welcome to Christmas time in LA. <laughs> welcome, yeah. It's kind of funny, you know. Growing up, all the years that I was in Washington, it's cold. It's either cold. It's always cold, uh, either raining or snowing um, on Christmas. So being here, it's like sometimes um, you thank God for the love of the family that I have. Uh, because the weather does not make it feel like Christmas or the holidays, but you know, the love of the family does. So thank God for that. But man, sometimes, I mean, sometimes you miss that cold. Like when Thanksgiving came, I said, I hope it's cold today. It's like 80. (laughs) (laughs) I got two songs to talk about, uh, before we take off. Um, one which I thought was fun and I love it. Actually three, one, uh, one artist is just make it four. Or five, six, five, uh, five is a good number. Seven. Um, actually, run Rudolph. How about run. eight? Stop. <laughs> run Rudolph. Run by Chuck Berry, Lemmy from Motorhead, uh, Billy Gibbs, and Dave Grohl. They do a cover of Run Rudolph. Run. Totally fun on one of these, you know, heavy metal Christmas albums and stuff like that. Um, that sounds like a fun song. I've probably heard it before. Right, dude? Yeah. Run Run Rudolph, dude. That's a good song. You can you can really do that in a whole bunch of different styles, but I would, I, I probably have heard it. I'm going to look that up when we're done here. Yeah. If anybody hasn't heard, um, Rob Halford from the singer of Judas Priest has done a Christmas album. And, you know, he did. He, I'll go down some of these things. And to be honest with you, this is a good album. He sings, screams very few times, does a he has a good backup band for him it's a good christmas album please give it a listen it's totally different it's uh i'm gonna say celestial is the name of the album from rob halford uh donner and blitz and these are some of the song titles uh, always in the manger morning star deck the halls joy to the world oh little town of bethlehem check that one out that's a good one hark the herald angels sing the first noel those rob halford does a great, great, great album, Christmas album. So on our last episode, if anybody heard, um, and Chris hasn't mentioned, I have a surprise for you. You know, you told me, oh, what time is it? It's 6.30 p.m. You got here like four hours ago, and you said, I got a surprise, and I totally forgot. Right. Are you ready for your surprise? Are you ready he's getting up what's he doing something just came in the door he's opening his purse 
He's <laughs> <laughs> got a purse inside his purse. All right, guys. Sorry about that. This is uh, Chris, Christmas gift. Chris, I need you to open this up. Merry fucking Christmas. Oh, wow. This is amazing. It's wrapped. And I can tell you wrapped it yourself, right? <laughs> right? Yes, I wrapped it myself. <laughs> you know, uh, um, I appreciate this, but this is the shittiest wrapping job <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, uh, while Chris is opening up his gift, which I know he'll love, um, one last song for me, which is my absolute... Hold up. We're going to stop. Stop. <laughs> This is awesome. As I've said before in our wrestling episode, Bret Hart is my favorite wrestler. Mr. Gray got me this, uh, wow, it's like a Hawaiian-style shirt of all Bret Hart. I love this, dude. Open it up. We are. We will take pictures, and we'll post them on Instagram. I love it. Yeah, dude, this is badass. <laughs> I would love Merry to come Christmas, over. Chris. Would, thank you. I would love to come over to the table and hug you. Yeah, COVID, come on. What are you doing? But... Uh, yeah, I would have to take my mask off and everything. This shirt is badass. I'm going to post it. Man, thank you. Yeah. Gosh. Surprise. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. I uh, feel bad I didn't get you anything. It's all right. Christmas is a time for giving. I feel fortunate giving. I didn't kick you out of my house earlier. Yeah, yeah. Last song I'm talking about before we end our Christmas extravaganza. Um, uh, Striper did a, an original song called Reason for the Season. Rocking, fun, love it. If you haven't heard it, please go check it out. They talk, you know, they're a Christian band, so they talk about Jesus is the reason for the season. I'm Catholic. I believe that. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas to Chris and his family. Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, Christmas is a time for family. You know what? Go spread, you know, good cheer and love to everybody. Um, anything else you want to say? Yeah, you know, um, I t Christmas is uh, a time of the year where it's good for you to um, the whole season of Thanksgiving through Christmas is a good time of the year for you to really take a look at your life and realize how fortunate all of us are to have all the things in our lives that we have. Yes. You know, great family, health, employment, friends. Yeah podcast kids a dog that snores so loud that it's like the neighbors complain um but there's also people out there that don't so this is a good time of year for everybody to you know give if you can and uh give to those that are less fortunate i think it's important sounds good all right, everybody, on that note, Merry Christmas. Have a, new, have a good New Year, and see ya from Big Talk with Chris and Greg.